There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I get my best radio voice on now. This is our um, March spring break edition. Talk about a Tuesday on Thursday. <laughs> is that, does that all fit on a flyer? I'm not sure that fits on a flyer. I, I don't even know what happened. I was spring breaking in Atlanta and Carla calls me and says, we got a problem. You schedule Tuesday on Thursday. And I'm like, okay. So welcome to Thursday. I Do think it. we'll have the same. I think we'll have the same conversation regardless. So um, today we are going to talk about, um, as you guys know, this is all about that R&D um rob and duplicate that we like to do so much here in the chamber world and so today's topic is kind of twofold somewhat related but but different and we're going to start with one um which is our awards and recognitions so um before i turn it over um to you guys to share all of your wealth of knowledge i will give you an update on the um, Alabama Small Business Awards, which is obviously um, is something that we um, kind of oversee. I met with the BCA team um, earlier this week. Um, we have a couple of new folks down there that we're going to be working with on this year's awards. We do not anticipate great, huge overhaul changes for the Alabama Small Business Awards. Um, the categories will remain the same for those of you who are already in the process of doing that. Um, however, there, there will likely be, um, and I'm not quite ready to speak to um, some of the exact changes, but there may be some changes in the way that um, businesses go from nominees to finalists to winners. Um, just... They're running that up the flagpole right now um, down at BCA, but I will tell you submissions will be done. And Carla, I'm assuming that is you um, logged in as Alabama Chambers, um, but we will do submissions this year online. So very similar to our AACC, our Chamber Champion, Chamber Professional of the Year, it will be an online form um, we will not be looking for 10 pages of a narrative. We will be looking at um, shorter um, in those four categories that um, are the Alabama Small Business Awards. So just kind of FYI that we anticipate that process opening the 1st of May, and you'll have until mid-September for those business awards. Um, so that's all. I just thought this would be a great opportunity since we're talking about awards and recognitions to kind of give you a heads up on a little bit of change that might um, be anticipated there. So with that, um, I'm just going to close, I'm going to shut up and um, let you guys share and kind of tell us, um, tell the group a little bit about some of the awards and recognitions that you all do and when you do them. Um, do you recognize them throughout the year or do you do them during your annual gala slash meeting um, and kind of how what that process is. So I'm going to be quiet. Anybody that'd like to jump in, talk about um, what you're doing. Paige, can I ask you a quick question? Just back to the small business. Are, yeah. So it is. can we anticipate that the criteria will be more hard numbers necessarily that you said? Okay. All right. No, no, it will still be a narrative, um, you know, written in those categories of community involvement, chamber engagement, you know, those overall deservedness, but um, it will just be an online submission. And and uh, we're trying to get all of the narratives to be more apples to apples. Go ahead. So not so much how good of a writer you are, but Correct. what you've actually done. Correct. Well, yeah. when you said 10 pages, I figured you were talking about me. So anyway. Oh, right. I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. No names. So it, no names. No names. Anyway. Guilty. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. You're good. Good question. That's why I started there. So, all right. Anybody want to jump in and talk about what you're doing to recognize your members? Any awards and recognitions um, that you're doing? 
We have one, so I don't really have, like, I can't say what we've always done because we're two months old, but <laughs> we are, we do have our first one coming up in April. It's our women in business event. And, uh, I can tell you a lot of lessons I've learned. Um, you need rules <laughs> when you do these. I, it was a women in business event. I opened up nominations and, um, was very, um, I got a lot of nominees that were not, they don't work. But because we had no rules, we had to throw them in there and they do great things. So um, but we are recognizing women to know in North Jefferson. And we we took um, nominations and we took we went with the natural break. We didn't set a certain number. So we have um, we are going to be recognizing five uh, women in North Jefferson um, all over the community at our event. We've already recognized them. Um, we've already told them who they are, which was super fun because we surprised them. One at Starbucks, one at the hairdresser was like literally in the cape. So a lot of fun there. So we'll be recognizing them on April 17th at our bank, at our um, Women in Business event. Heather, I love the way you did that. Talk about kind of being able to engage people multiple times. You know, just I, I love seeing that the way you were recognizing them. It was very fun. It was funner than I anticipated. <laughs> All right, who else? Who else is doing cool things and recognition? Does anyone have like nonprofit of the year? We, I'm, I'm assuming most have ambassador or member of the year, business of the year. But what else? Um, how else are you engaging? Maybe a segment, an industry of the year, healthcare, anything like that? Yes, yeah, well, Debbie. Okay, so I'm Debbie Kiker. For those who do not know me, I'm with the Hueytown Chamber of Commerce. Um, we just had our um, celebrating our stars where we roll out the red carpet for our winners. Of course, they do know ahead of time, but we do the same, the business of the year. Small, we do do nonprofit of the year, citizen of the year. This year, we added student citizen of the year. And wow, it brought a lot of people. <laughs> and I loved it. And we do educator of the year. And last year, we recognized bus driver of the year, but you would not believe how many people love our bus drivers. Go figure. I don't know. Um, and we did. A, we added this year food truck of the year because all of a sudden, Hubie Town has 10 food trucks um, in our area. Um, and then our special, special award is our Huey Award. And this year, actually... I have a very good relationship with our mayor and our city council, and they've really done a whole lot over the past few years. So we presented them the Huey Award this year because, I mean, it took me almost 10 minutes to read what all they've done for our little community, which was great. But um, so we do do that each year. Several of those are new and we've kept the same theme every year. So we kind of save on some of the expense with decorating. We just do it differently because you're always going to have different people. So nobody really knows. Um, and we did our first women in business lunch. Now we didn't do awards and I was totally blown away. I think we had 67 women come. I was like, that's huge for our little, little bitty area. And, um, they want to continue to have something quarterly for women. So when I started the chamber and I'll, I'll quit babbling in a minute, we started out with 36 businesses and now we're up to 252, I think members. And out of that, almost 60 are women-owned businesses in Hueytown. So I thought, we've got to do something. So we did it on National Women's Day on March 8th. And it was very successful, and they're wanting to do it again. So hopefully, we'll get that going. That's all. Love it. Debbie, I love the, the Huey Awards. That's cool. <laughs> it was big this year. Wow. <laughs> they were thrilled. Because it was a that was a surprise. <laughs> Okay. Katie um, is with the Auburn Chamber. I don't know if you guys are monitoring the chat, but um, with the Auburn Chamber, they give out three awards. They're young professional within the young professional program based on the core values of connect, develop, and serve, um, which is is great. That so that's just within their young professional. Um, and I know Auburn also does a spirit of Auburn award at their annual meeting. I know last year it was Coach Caddy. I don't remember who else or who was this year, but um, all right. We also have, um, let's see. Oh, Heather, yeah, said check out um, some of the things Albert Bull is doing. 
they're doing a women in, instead of a women in business lunch and they're doing a whole series of women's events. All right, who else? What else are you doing? Kirk, what are you doing down there in Shelby to recognize folks? Uh, well, before I share that with you, I just we just need to acknowledge that uh, Rick Roden is also on the yes. call. The, yes. the legend, the legendary Rick Roden. So, um, so I think our chamber is like awards are us. I mean, we have a ton of, of awards. So just real quickly and not to monopolize the conversation, but in March, we do a healthcare professional of the year. We do that because healthcare is an important component of quality of life. And I'm just giving you these reasons in case anybody says, why is the chamber doing a healthcare program? Well, healthcare is one of the main things that that individuals and businesses look at, access to it. Are we going to move to this community? Do they have quality health care? Of course, there's other things too. But so we recognize four individuals um, in that. I will share with y'all that it's a challenge because the very people you're trying to recognize given their schedules, it's hard to get all the nominees to come. So we tried a reception this year and we actually didn't have a great turnout from all the nominees like we had hoped we would. But so that's a, so the healthcare professional is, it's a good thing, but it's a challenge sometimes to get the people to come. We had 24 nominees, but not all of them um, could be there. Uh, then next month we'll have our student educator of the year program where we'll, we're going to recognize 22 student nominees and 40 educator nominees and we'll give five scholarships to students and three stipends to teachers. In May, we'll do our small business of the year program. Uh, I, just real quick, student educator, just to explain in, in case nobody's doing that yet. Again, workforce development, let's recognize excellence in the classroom. So uh, recognize both students and, and, and teachers. Uh, small business of the year, we have five categories. Unfortunately, our categories never align with the uh, CCAABC <laughs> BCA categories. So, so for those of you considering part, doing that steps. in the future, make sure that you align the categories with what BCA CTA does. Um, um, that's not why we've never had a recipient. I don't mean it that way, but we just we we can't get anybody to want to change it. Uh, we do a public safety award program. Again, another quality of life issue where we recognize. Uh, law enforcement and fire departments. And then we've recently started to add some, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the terminology, but uh, ambulance, those folks, paramedics started to add, add those folks. Uh, in October, we do a tourism and recreation all-star award program where we recognize uh, four different groups. That's a, that's a restaurant, a hotel, an attraction, and a newcomer. Uh, the tourism and recreation. We're not the tourism and recreation entity, but we do collaborate with Discover Shelby, which is the countywide um, group that does that. We do a Diamond Awards in November. That's a program that we inherited from when we combined with another chamber back in 2018, but that's a nonprofit, a public servant, and a citizen of the year. Uh, that And then in and I kind of forgot this one early on, but we created a couple of years ago a community leadership award named after the retired county manager. So it's the Alex Duchok Community Leadership Award. And that's either someone from the business community or someone from the general public. We've only we don't award it every year. We've only awarded it twice. Uh, but we do put out the the call for nominations, but um, that's not something we do every year. So it's, I guess, a little bit more special, but I view doing these events is great because, and and it's a way to tap into the community that's not officially part of your chamber, i.e. investors or members. So any entity can be nominated for any of this stuff. The only, th nobody gets penalized, but if it's, we just tell the judges who review all the, the information that's submitted in each one of these, we just ask if there's a if there's a a tie between an investor and a future investor. The uh, the investor gets like one extra point or whatever to help with that. So but anyway, it's just another again. I think these award programs are great to recognize the positive things that are happening in your community, but then also um, selfishly you're tapping into um, organizations that may not be at the table 
at this current juncture. Anyway, that's what we do. Kirk, Kirk, I have a question for you. On your citizen of the year, because you are multiple cities, do y'all do one per city or one from all the cities? Just one. Okay. Great question, Heather. Um, and I hope you guys are, I'm not going to read the stuff in the chat. Um, you guys can certainly see that. But I will acknowledge, um, Katie mentioned that the Auburn Spirit um, Award went to Coach Williams, um, the equestrian coach. Those of you who were with us last year in Opelika, um, he was our guest speaker at dinner. Uh, very well deserving. So that's that was great. I didn't realize that. That's cool. Um, Kirk, if um, any of our other execs wanted to kind of see that rundown, I'm assuming all of your awards are you know, on your website. Um, oh. <laughs> Never assume. Never assume. I mean, they're on. They're on when we're. They're on when we're doing them. Like the healthcare okay. is gone, but I'm. Be more than happy to. If anybody wants documents, you know, nomination forms, uh, agendas, anything like that, more than happy to share. That's great. Just Please, I appreciate that. And I'll give a plug. As you guys know, we um, invested last year in Growth Zone for the association. And one of the things, two things that you're able to do is create the login. You're gonna have each other's contact information. Um, you can look up others. If you don't know how to get in touch with Kirk, you can go through Growth Zone and do that. But then also um, we, in our spare time, we're gonna start uploading all the documents that we get um, and samples. And you'll be able to go into that resource library and see those, so. Um, We've already started adding some bylaw samples and some, uh, what's the other one that we started adding? I don't uh, know. It's, it was, I feel like it was employee something. manuals. Employee manuals. manuals. That was the other one we started adding. <laughs> so yes. we're slowly getting those added, but we, and, and same with these videos, we'll start putting, I'm making a playlist on YouTube and then we'll have a link to that playlist. So you can watch past videos. We're working on that. We're having to move them because they were originally in Vimeo because we were using constant contact, but now we're using growth zone so we can do everything in YouTube, which is just far more convenient. Um, but we'll have all these resources for you guys. Um, there, there, there will be the Rick Roden pictorial library, right? Capturing Rick's career from yes. back at log cabin days. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. I yes. do want to plug that if you've received our good newsletter, you saw Rick also recently received a local award. <laughs> That's right. Okay. In uh, Decatur, Morgan County, we do, of course, the Citizen of the Year, a Nonprofit of the Year, a Young Professional of the Year. Yesterday at our annual meeting, we had our Citizen of the Year and awarded for um, an Ambassador of the Year. Uh, this year, we've started Superstar Teacher each month, and we're wanting to grow that into a teacher of the year. And so if anybody has anything you can share on that, we would to love to hear about it. Anybody have Educator of the Year or Teacher of the Year? Um, I know, Kirk, you said you guys do. Yeah, would you mind sharing that with Denise over there in Decatur? Sure. All right. Does anybody do a, um, they're called, I know you said you do a hospitality, but like a um, shining star award for um, maybe a hospitality worker in your, um, I'm trying to think who did this. Somebody I know <clears throat> used to do where it would almost be a, an on the spot recognition, um, not necessarily big annual award and recognition, but um where the chamber could recognize, say, a frontline worker in your hospitality industry that just everybody in the community loves. And so, um, oh, I know who it was. Our Rotary Club used to do it. I'm assuming they don't anymore, Carla. But um, our Rotary Club had um, the Shining Shining Star Award, I think. And so we could give them out. Um, Okay, so South Baldwin used to do one too. So it was just something like a, a little pin and a little little um, um, 
certificate that we could give out, you know, if we saw or knew that there was just this particular, like everybody went through Taco Bell and knew that the lady at the, um, at the drive-in was going to give you awesome service. And so it's just kind of those spot awards, not necessarily something that takes a lot of, um, a lot of logistical work, but just having some little pins and having little certificates that could be given out to um, those frontline workers because they really make a difference in how your community is is seen. So just another thought kind of beyond just that, you know, the big awards. Anybody else? Anybody do anything, doing anything else? Um, another group that maybe you're recognizing? It's not necessarily a, a group per se that it's Adrian. Sorry, Will hey, Adrian. Um, I joined a little late. I apologize. Um, but we have been toying with the idea. It's actually an idea I'm trying to borrow from our school system. They give the students in the elementary school what they call brag tags when they accomplish certain things. It's like a little keychain. So we've been trying to, we've been racking our brains, trying to think of what we could do for like our chamber members as individuals to like earn like a lapel pin or a patch or a decal or something that they can kind of like collect, like maybe like Boy Scout or Girl Scout badges per se, like something that they can kind of say, hey, like we recognized you showed up to ribbon cuttings, you know, overwhelming, or you are a champion of this or that. Um, does anybody have kind of a little reward program per se that they're doing? We, we don't, sorry, we don't Shelby County. Adrian, I love that idea. Thanks. We're, I mean, we're trying to flush it out. We don't know. I mean, we've, we've thought about maybe giving them like a board to display something on, um, whether it's like a, a pin or, um, I don't know, some sort of collection that just says, I am totally awesome and invested in my chamber. I think we've got some collective uh, lot of brain trust here that my mull that around um and adrian is in headland um for those of you who don't know um if you think of something that might could help her um just reach out and let her know i love the i love the brag tag that's that's cool all right so um we can definitely come back if somebody thinks of something else sorry my nose is trying um to talk about other award awards recognitions. Um, but I know the other part to our conversation today is around um, creative sponsorship ideas. Um, so you guys tell me, what are you doing that's really cool um, sponsoring? So in two ways, um, ideas that are engaging your members in a new way, and then maybe some non dues revenue um, creation that, um, that you're doing around some sponsorship ideas. Who wants to jump in? I'm gonna start calling people out now. Y'all know I'll do it. Faith, I mentioned the the superstar teacher that that was new in our TRC this year, and it has gone over very well. We've done three so far, and the presenting sponsor is just all in. He's already partnered as a partner in education. He's gone in on some extra donations to uh, playground equipment. He started bringing breakfast to the classrooms of the teachers. So he has just really embraced this and jumped all in. One of our monthly sponsors this last month looked to me as we were leaving the school and said, that's an automatic renewal for me. This was fun. This was great. They love recognizing our educators. So that's been a, a big positive for us. So that's where the discussion came standing outside of one of the schools about expanding it to a teacher of the year. So we're getting a lot of good community feedback also on that because everybody's wanting to support our, our educators. Denise is right. I think, uh, you know, you're talking about ways to get, you know, sponsorship ideas and everything. A lot of, a lot of times it has to do with what type of program you're asking to be sponsored. Yeah. And the people love things tied in with education. Mm -hmm. We started a new program this year. We had some of our business and industry uh, contacted us and said, how do we get more women 
women in construction and manufacturing. In construction, 11% uh, is women. So there's just not many women. It's mainly been a man-controlled man uh, profession. So they've asked, how can we get more people in construction and manufacturing? So we created a new program. It's called Pink Hard Hat Girls and Women in CTE Construction and Manufacturing. And what we did, we, we got sponsors to sponsor. We literally have pink hard hats. And we give them to the uh, any, uh, all the girls, and this is high school girls. We started the program a year ago now, and we had 26 girls signed up in our two school systems. Uh, but it went over so well, and w they went back to the school and told everybody that this year, when we started this past fall, we had 96 girls signed up for it. And so what we do is we uh, have once a quarter, we take these girls into different manufacturers, different construction jobs, diff different places, and we expose them to jobs that they probably never even thought about. And we have women that are in those businesses and, and uh, uh, jobs talk to them. And we've already had many of girls said, you know, I would have never thought about going into a career like this, but I would do this. And so it's it when we came out with this, sponsors came out of the woodworks. They wanted to be a part of it. And so um, I think a lot of times when you're looking for sponsors, if you're look if, if you if you create great things for people to sponsor and especially tied in with education, they'll jump all over. Yeah, we have we have a similar it's called Sweetie Camp and it's it's a high school girls camp that we partner with Calhoun Community College, which is a great partner for us. And the Sweetie is a summer welding electrical and I, I think there's some computer aided design in there and it's girls only. And we get female professionals to come in from Newcore Steel and talk about careers in welding. And, you know, these they, they're young women, too, so they're closer in their age, and it's exciting to see just those light bulbs go up. They they build a project. I actually have one here in my office. They weld a lamp, and they wire it, and it works. They can plug it in, so they take that home and, and show, you know, after five days of camp, they've got great career ideas. They've got a great takeaway. They leave with a, a toolbox and all kinds of information for careers that keep him keep them right here because that's the other thing we want them to know they can stay right here in Decatur and Morgan County and and have a fabulous career um, in in those fields like you're saying that are not necessarily top on their radar. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. Our pink hard hats <laughs> we, they take them to every single industry and the industry gives them stickers of that industry that they can put on their hard hats and they love that. They yeah. just think that is too cool. Yeah. And by the way, guys, I've got to jump off of here. I've got a board meeting in just a little bit. <laughs> I apologize, but uh, uh, I've got literally 20 minutes to get over to my board meeting. Thank you, Rick. Always Thanks, good guys. to see you. Appreciate y'all. All right. Um, real quick, since we were talking about education, I'll share something that um, Carla and I did when we were um, at the local level. Um, going again back to education and loving on our, our teachers and things, we turned our um, one day for years and years before I got there, we did a teacher's breakfast on the first day back, their first in service day. Um, and it just got stale. It got really stale. You know, when you've done something over and over and over. Um, so we took that idea and created education celebration week. And it's the whole first week of school starting when the teachers come in service through open house. And we have multiple sponsorship opportunities that and um, they've changed it since I've left. But um, during open house, um, so not just revenue generation, but engaging your business people into your schools during open house, we would have volunteers go into each school just to help you know, give directions, give out paper, give out bus schedules, do things, just be extra hands on deck. Um, and that's getting, we put them in a chamber t-shirt or, you know, chamber shirt, um, their name tag, and it would get our business leaders physically into our schools. Um, and, the edu and the whole system loved it because that's just extra hands on deck. And then during open house, we would do snack boxes 
for the teachers in their um, teacher lounge or teacher workroom or whatever, because if you guys have kids, you know, that during open house, they're there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and they can't leave. They can't go get something to eat. So we had some of our members. I don't remember, Carla, I don't know if you remember. It was, maybe it was $75 or $100 to just sponsor. Um, and we would go to Costco or Sam's and just load up and just put snacks galore. Um, and it was very well received. Again, low cost, low entry point sponsorship opportunity, but just loving on those teachers. Um, that was two things that we that we did. Anybody else doing um, cool sponsorship or um, non-dues revenue? Um, maybe not so much event driven, but um, programming ideas. Uh, this is, has nothing to do with programming, but we're talking about educators. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to have our third year, what we call um, Shelby County Career Corps. And that's a, a summer internship or educator exchange program for teachers. Um, we try to do at least a dozen. We get them to, uh, they sign up, they express an interest in the type of business they'd like to go into. The company, it's no cost to the company. They spend three to five days during the months of June or July. And it's a hands-on experience for them learning, you know, what type of uh qualifications are needed for the different jobs that company X has. Uh, in return, the teachers get paid, um, and that's paid by our foundation. Uh, Chamber has a small foundation, but then they write a lesson plan that has to be approved. And so we're actually teaching the teachers how, and they can answer the question from their students, Ms. Smith or Mr. Jones, why does it matter that I have to be able to do this? And then that teacher can say, well, Tommy, Susie, I'm glad you asked that question. This past summer, I was at XYZ Company, and this is why you need to learn how to do these different things. And so, again, the criteria to get paid, if you will, a stipend uh, for that week in the summer is that they have to provide a lesson plan. And then uh, we do share the. Then they also share the lesson plans with other teachers in their area. Uh, so there's, there's no... Uh, you know, you don't have to be a, a, you know, a math or a science teacher to participate. We've got teachers that are, we got teachers that have applied and have been accepted in the, uh, in the elementary school level. Because uh, again, back to that early education and whatnot. So again, it's not an award program. Um, um, we haven't tested the waters on a sponsorship yet. I imagine we would, but we usually have more um, businesses signed up than we get educators to participate because the businesses see the value, not literally, but in essence, helping to write the lesson plans. They're talking to the teachers while they're there. And so anyway, it's just another way to integrate career readiness with not only just directly with the students, which we've done for a lot of years, but now we're working with the teachers more so too. That's great, Kurt. Is anyone else doing a um, an abbreviated um, leadership program or teacher academy or something during the fall to connect your educators into your community. I know there's a couple of chambers uh, doing that. Is anyone anyone on the call doing that? Okay. Um, what else? Who else wants to share? I'll start calling. Anybody got any? Um, so Laura, I know you and Denise both, you guys do TRCs, right? Anything cool new coming out of your, your TRCs? Um, There's sponsorable elements. Well, I'll actually, um, it's, it seems Kim, um, I see he's on the call in Alex City too. And, oh, um, I can. <laughs> so, they all do, they do something um, similar to this too, but, and we're actually going to R&D what they've adapted the program to. And I actually have, um, have a t-shirt on today and it is, um, we do a t-shirt Friday where we um, have a sponsor for each month and we sold those out in our TRC. Um, we, uh, we didn't, 
I like the way Kim has done it. We wear them every Friday and it's become um, sort of a challenge sometimes. So Kim, had, she does it one Friday a month, and then they, I think Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all take, y'all go out to lunch with the sponsor that Friday. Right, so we work with the sponsor to figure out which Friday of the month they want. Um, this month happened to be a local diner. So last Friday, we wore our t-shirts, and then we went to lunch with the general manager of the diner and took pictures and posted all over social media of what we ate for lunch and pictures with them. And so it was very well received. Um, the other thing that we're doing that came out of TRC this year is Try It Tuesdays. And so we've done two of them so far. We just posted one. Two people from our office went and tried to learn how to work the Chick-fil-A drive through And um, so Jacob and Liz tried to take some orders and then run the kitchen and, and different things. So that like we have had super um, response on our social media for that. We've done two so far. One, I learned to make an Easter basket at a local boutique downtown. And then um, we did this one. And then this week we all went and did a spin class. So that'll be a fun one to come out next month. We did a try it Tuesday um, too, and we have um, one of our staff members has a little five-year-old, and so we took her out. Um, and one of the greatest examples was we took her to the Ace Hardware, and we we didn't script her; we just let her go through Ace and um, pick out things of interest to her. And we got so much traction on social media from people saying, "I had no idea that Ace Hardware had." XYZ product. Um, and so it got a lot of um, attention um, through that. Uh, we, with our t shirt Fridays, um, it's great when you have younger people on your staff that are very social media driven um, and their creative minds. Uh, probably one of the best ones that we have had with our Trot Tuesday was last Friday. Not Trot Tuesday, I'm sorry, t shirt Friday was last Friday and they did, um, they created us a presence on TikTok. I don't even know how to access TikTok. So, um, but then they'll share them on other social media platforms, but they did a real cute one for, with the full house theme um, uh, on TikTok. And because our t-shirt Friday this month is a real estate company. And so it was really neat um, what they put together last Friday for for the real estate company, but um, you can become really creative and get a lot of mileage on social media out of those. And all we have to do is wear a t-shirt on Fridays. And like I said, it, it's challenging. We're not going to do it every Friday next year. Um, I actually forgot about mine this morning because we're wearing it on Thursday since we're closed for Good Friday. But um, oh, okay. yeah, so that's why I have it on today. I'm not crazy. Well, I am crazy, but um, I hadn't lost on mine completely. So, um, but anyway, that's a fun, easy um, sponsorship that we have. But I, I am going to R and D Kim and follow her suit for next year. I want hey, to remind you guys when you're going out and visiting these businesses to do these little these spotlights on your social media. You're and you're taking pictures of the food, and you're taking pictures of products, and you're doing all of this. Make sure you're reviewing them. Review them on Google. Review them on Yelp while while you're there in that moment because that's added value to them. It, it, it sh and even if you do it like a day or two later, just that's even a even better follow-up that they get that notice that says, oh, look, they not only did they spotlight my business, but they also you know, gave me a nice review. And if you don't see them on Google when you try to review them, help them get their business listed on Google. Help, help them, you know, if you're wanting to spotlight a business that's not on social media, follow up with them and say, hey, you really need to fix this or make sure you're, you know, give them that advice because that's what, that helps them. Um, and you're already there doing it. So you might as well do a nice little Google review or a Yelp review while you're, while you're in there. Laura, if we can do talk about it Tuesday on Thursday, you can do try it Friday on Thursday. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. We I, just wanted to I have no idea what month it is. <laughs> Um, we did, I, I we to, did, no, go ahead. 
Now, I was just going to share a couple of ideas that we got from Frank Kenny's page, the Chamber Professionals page, and they're both social media driven. So it was the first time we'd done either one. So we haven't really talked about the possibility of a sponsorship, but it got some good visibility for our folks who participated. One was Shop Local and Win. And we did that from the 1st of November to the end of December, encouraging folks to shop local. And we got local people, local businesses to donate prizes for that. And folks who would shop local turned in their receipts. They could either email them or drop them off at the chamber office. And they got a point if they shopped with a chamber member or two, if it was a non-chamber member who was in the city of Leeds. And so we did weekly drawings for those prizes and we did a video each Friday to make a big deal out of the folks winning those prizes. So that was that was very well received. And we'll do that again next year. The other one was Leap of Kindness Day. And that just encouraged folks to get out and do something nice. We provided a list of our local nonprofits and gave people some ideas of things to do. But they could certainly come up with their own, too. And then everything we found out about, we publicized that on our social media. And we've got a, a pretty heavy social media presence in our community. Hey, Diane, can I ask you a question? Did, did I hear you right that one point for a chamber investor? I did member? it backwards. Okay. <laughs> it was okay. two points for a chamber member, one for a member, for a non-member business in the city limits. I was just going to ask what the, it, it, it's fine either way, but I just wanted to make sure. Got it. That's thank right. You. That's right. And so that was the number of points they got uh, for the drawing. Yeah. Thank That's you for right. catching that. Anybody else have some cool um, non-dues revenue um, sponsorship opportunities? Um, ways that you're engaging with your, your members? We, or your Paige, we've had some good success with Friday Flyers. We do a monthly Friday Flyers email. There's a presenting sponsorship with it. There's a monthly featured flyer sponsorship that goes along with it. And then it, it's free to our members to submit a flyer. So we're actually, right now, they're going out once a month on the third Fridays. It's growing to the point where we may have to go ahead and go twice a month because the, the emails are getting so long. Our members are really taking advantage of getting their flyer in, and it links to either a sale or event or services that they offer. So we're getting a lot of engagement on that. Well, Denise, and I've seen several chambers across the state that are starting to do that. I think yeah. you, you guys were the OG, but um, I've seen several other folks that are starting to do that. Yeah. Great way to separate, to give um, your members an opportunity to share their um, things without it bogging down what you're trying to share from the chamber. I like that separation. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? I'm, I'm, mm -mm. Um, I have one thing. We haven't yeah. done it this year, but we've done, we have probably maybe five or six times cash mob. Has anybody done that? Um, cash, mob. cash mob, sort of like a flash mob. <laughs> but we get a whole bunch of a lot of, usually it's our ambassadors, some individuals from the community and our chamber board. Um, we pick a business and then we go in all together really loud with the signs that says you've been mobbed, cash mob. And then we all go in there and spend at least $20 a person um, at that particular business. And they, they love it, love it because we're spending money and sometimes we'll have 20 people go and we ask that they spend 20, at least $20, you know, some might not, but it was, it's always fun too. Um, and the businesses love it. I just haven't done it this year yet. Good. Good, good. Anybody else? We've got just a few more minutes. Um, we try to keep to an hour or so. Um, I love, I don't know if you guys saw, um, Katie shared, they actually sold the cover of their community magazine, um, which they did the photo shoot at that at that business. So um, it was an indirect spotlight, which I, I like. Um, 
they went and shot the um because I think Katie correct me if I'm wrong you guys usually put your staff on the cover um and so it's the staff at that business so um that was great All right. Anybody have anything else? All right. Well, I will just take the last few minutes and say thank you guys for sharing um, and for not judging that it's Thursday and not Tuesday. Um, it's. I'm just going to say spring break week. That's all I'm going to say is it's spring break. Um, we will... Um, Make sure that all of the rest of them will be on Tuesday from now on. Carla and I are going to check the calendar. We have set them for the rest of the year, and we hope that you'll go ahead and put the, all of these on your calendar um, and plan to be with us. Again, sharing. Um, this is the best way that we learn is from each other. Um, if you have not yet signed up to be with us in Florence um, at the end of April, I hope that you will do so. The um, room block is fairly full. Um, we've had to add and it will close tomorrow. So if you have not made your hotel reservations, I encourage you to do so. Um, and then also the deadline for AACC, AACE, Chamber Professional, Chamber Champion, um, that deadline is tomorrow. So if you are planning on applying or want to nominate someone, um, please do that before close of business tomorrow. So um, with that, does anybody have anything for the for the greater good to share? All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, it's great to see everybody's smiling faces, even if it's still on Zoom. But we'll see you guys in April in Florence. And uh, I hope you all have a blessed uh, Easter weekend. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Paige. Bye, everybody.